Hey, welcome to Prequilt. My name is Gar, and for this video, we are going to learn how to use Prequilt's block editor. So we'll start by creating a simple block called the Hourglass, and then we're going to create the Hunter Star, and then we're going to create a rectangular block that's um, that's called the Double HST. So I'm going to open up a new design over here. Okay. And this grid is 5 inches by 5 inches, and it's 10 rows by 10 columns. I want to open up the uh, Blocks panel and click on to the Make Custom Block, and that will open up our Block Editor. I'll start by giving it a name, call this Hourglass. And I'm going to leave the dimensions as 5 inches by 5 inches because that's the dimensions uh, of the grid. But I want to reduce the number of grids here because the hourglass is a very simple um, block. So we don't need so many grid lines. And this is the drawing area. These are little rect these little uh, checkers indicate that the block is uh, empty. And so this is the empty area. Because we haven't actually filled anything, uh, we only see the checkers at this point. So I'm going to click this triangle to add our first shape. And I'm going to stretch the width to fill it all the way. And then I'm going to change the color to black. I'm going to repeat the step to create the triangle on the top. This time I'm going to rotate it by 180 degrees. So that completes the half, the, the half of the hourglass. I just need to do the left and the right side now. Okay. So as I'm dragging this, and when I let go, it snaps to the closest uh, grid line. This is because we have the snap to position on. So I'm going to turn it off just to show you how it looks like. Okay, so I prefer to turn it on. And I'm going to rotate this. And the same thing with the snap to scale. So if I turn this off, and when I drag this to resize it, this is the snapping off. So I'm going to turn it back on. OK. Now I want to create the triangle on the other side. But rather than creating, clicking uh, the triangle over here, I'm just going to use the clone feature. And then I just have to rotate and position it. So we're done our hourglass block. And now I'm going to save this block to our quilt. Next, we're going to create the, hourglass, the uh, hunter star. Okay. Again, I'm going to leave the size as 5 inches by 5 inches. But I'm going to reduce the grids to from 6 to 4 and add a square this time. And then I'm going to add a bunch of these uh, right angle triangles. I believe it uses about 8 of them. Okay, so rotate that and then clone it. And then, so that completes half of the hunter star. We now need to create the other half. Rather than creating it from scratch by clicking onto the shapes, what we can do is copy or duplicate uh, the existing white shapes and then rotate it and then changing the colors to black. So I'm going to show you three methods of selecting the, these shapes. The first is just to click them, OK? Uh, but we want to select all nine of the shapes. So what I can do is hold on to the shift on my keyboard and then click them. And I'm going to do that for all nine shapes, OK? So that's the first way of doing it. The second way is to uh, select it based on the colors. 
So since all the shapes have the same colors, all I can all I have to do is right click on any of the shapes and I have the ability to now select all nine based on the color. So this is much easier than manually clicking them. And the last method is to drag to create a selection area. Okay, so just remember when you're creating the selection area, always start at the empty at an empty area, because otherwise if you drag it on a shape, it's just going to think you want to drag it. Okay. So now that we have it selected, we can just click on to the clone button and then change it to a different to the black and then rotate. And then with the position and the snapping on, it easily positions to exactly where I want it to be. So we're done the H the, the Hunter Star now. Uh, at this point I'm a little bit curious how the colors might look if I were to change the white to maybe like a light pink or something like that. So I can do that by uh, selecting the shape and what we see here are the color tags. Now we have three color tags in this block A, B, and C. So each of these shapes are connected or linked to color tag A. And these ones are connect are linked to color tag B, so the black. Now the good thing about color tags is because we've linked them to the color tags, all we have to do is change the value of the color tag and all of these shapes will update automatically. So we have AGF solid and as I'm rolling over you can see that it automatically changes color. Okay, So I can also use uh, explore different fabric companies like Free Spirit or Kona. Okay, so this lighter pink. And I can also change the uh, black to something else. Okay. Now I'm, at this point, I can change the um, the value uh, not only to have solids, but also use the print. So these are some of the prints that I already have in my account. Um, you can always import uh, additional fabric. You can import them f directly from your computer, or you can copy and paste a URL that you find, uh, perhaps you found a fabric uh, from an online store. Uh, all you have to do is get the URL and paste it in here. You can also explore the online stores that we've collaborated with other fabric companies. So I'm just going to click on to Cottoneer. And uh, maybe click on to Children's Fabric. And then I'm going to click on to this gray one and this one, maybe this one. Okay, so now that it's imported, I can close this off and I can select them and also scale them as well. Okay, so what's great about using the online stores is that uh, the fabric that you see on pre-quilt are pulled directly from their website so you don't have to worry about uh, not being able to buy the fabric because it's discontinued or whatever uh, so that's one of the advantages okay so I'm happy with this uh, block and now I'm ready to save it I can save this block to my quilt or I can save it to my stash when I save it to my stash, I could then import this block in any of the quilt that I'm uh, that I'm creating. So it would save me some time. That way, I don't have to recreate it every time. So I'm just going to save it to my uh, quilt for now. And lastly, we're going to create this uh, double HST, which is uh, five inches by two and a half. Okay, so I'm going to call this uh, double HST. I'm going to change the uh, height to 2.5 and reduce 
this to two. Okay. I'm going to save it to my quilt. Okay, so now with these three blocks, I can start adding these blocks to the grid. Uh, so let's start with the Hunter Star over here. And I'm going to supply some rotation. Oops. I'm going to just click on R on my keyboard because it's a little bit more convenient for me. Okay, so we have the hunter star, and now we're going to add the hourglass. Um, and then maybe we'll just copy this and paste that over here. And copy that, paste there. So we have some extra rows and columns that I'm going to now um, get rid of. So we have four, row, four columns by four rows. Okay. So now we want to uh, uh, kind of um, insert like a new column in here. So that way we could um, put this double HST there. Okay, so we'll do the rows first, insert after, and then we'll resize it to 2.5. And then we'll insert after, and then resize it to 2.5. Uh, now we could start adding uh, right there. Okay, so we just need to rotate these blocks by 90 degrees and we're done. Um, we have this empty little square right now, right here, that's two and a half, uh, that's two and a half inches by two and a half inches. Rather than creating a block and filling it in with the square, uh, we have a more of a convenient way of doing it, which is using the one, one patch block. Um, so I'm just going to click this and that fills it in. Um, so finally, we're going to uh, talk about how you can import blocks. So we've been creating our custom blocks, but you can also import them uh, by using Prequilt's uh, block library. So let me import this and... Uh, be the snail trail and then winding ways and I'm going to import them so you can also go to clicking on uh, your block stash you can import uh, blocks from your stash okay so now that we have these extra blocks here we need to now uh, create more rows and columns uh, I'm just going to create a uh, Four, so this was five, so that's nine, nine by nine. Okay, so I'm going to resize this to 2.5 and then resize this to 2.5. Um, <clears throat> and then I'm going to fill in uh, the corner beam and I'm going to do some rotation by clicking R. And then I'll fill in maybe that. Um, oops, missed it. Okay, um, fill that in. Uh huh. Okay, so then just rotate. Rotate that and then fill these little guys in with a one patch block. And I oh, missed this one. All right, uh, now I'm just going to fill, maybe I'll fill this one in over here. And then I'll fill this one. So I'm just copying. So I went a little fast there. Uh, you can copy and paste.
And then for this one, maybe I will um, put this one in there. Copy and paste. I actually want this one um, in here. And then I could copy this and then paste that in there. Now we have, uh, I think I create an extra row and column. So I'm just going to right click and then I'm going to say remove column and then remove column. So there you go. Um, we are now done our quilt and I'm just going to do one more thing and then we're going to wrap it up. I'm just going to click on to this uh, color randomizer. Okay, so I'm just going to save my work now and I want to randomize the colors that we have here. So when I click this, it's going to randomly um, uh, provide a new color for A, B, and C. Okay, and so that's another reason why I like color tags is because um, using color tags enables you to use the color randomization feature. Uh, so the color randomization is probably a separate video on its own. Uh, I just want to wrap it up uh, by showing you the color randomizer. And I think that's it for now. Um, I hope this covers some of the basics of the block editor. And if you have any questions or uh, suggestions, uh, write them down in the comments below. And I will make other videos for advanced features for the block editor soon. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.